Puneet Prakash Mehra is our guest Hello. this time and uh, maybe you all are surprised to see him but uh, I don't think he needs any introduction once I say Puneet Prakash Mehra. Puneet welcome to E-Times and uh, it's going to be a very engaging conversation with you I'm sure because we are meeting after a long time and we are going to talk about you plus your legendary father of course uh, Prakash Mehra. Now tell me uh, Puneet, what are your earliest childhood memories about your father? Earliest childhood memories about my father? Um, the best memory of my father that I would have as a child is coming back from school and he would always wear crisp white clothes. He was in a habit, like anyone who knows him would know Prakash is always in all white white shirt, white trousers, white shoes and I would come back from school and if he called me to the set or if he called me to the office I would be dirty because we would have PT class in the end or something like that and I'd jump right on him and all his clothes would get but he wouldn't open his mouth he would just give me a tight hug and give me a kiss on my forehead and that's the best memory that I have of him. So he was the man in white before Abbas Mastan? Oh yes, way before, way before, always in white. Well, uh, so did you go with him on the set? Did you see how he worked? Did you see how he interacted with the actors? I used to go on the set mostly as a child. Hmm. I being the youngest and there was an age gap between my older brothers and me. Hmm. So I used to be on the set more like, uh, like call him on the set, like he would always tell the staff, bring me on set, you know, like as a toy, like, you know, I'd be there. But I would observe now as you grow older, those memories come back. Hmm. Yes, there are a lot of memories from the set. I have seen him on the set of, I think my first memory would be during Sharabi. Hmm. is because of the waterfall, at the waterfall scene. Yeah. That would be the first proper memory that I would have. I would barely be, what, three, four years old, but I remember hmm. that. Because they created that waterfall just for the movie. You know, and it was there in Film City for the longest time, even, you know, after the movie released and whatever. For years, it was like a tourist uh, attraction. Hmm. Tourists would go to Film City around the world and then they would talk and it's ironic that later on they removed it, but... So, I'm sure Mr. Bachchan must have lifted you in his lap. Yeah, yeah, as a kid, of course, we yeah. all... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Obviously, as a kid. Obviously, <laughs> obviously as a kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, didn't you ever feel that, uh, yeah, along the way, as his film started becoming hits and super hits, I should a hero. Banna Not me. Never. I always wanted to be behind the camera. Hmm. I always used to, like I had a joke with my father. I said, Papa, Natsna ni aata, nacha na aata. Hmm. And he would smile and say, ye dekhu. I said, Natsna ni aata. He never wanted you to become a hero? No, he would want me to be in the film business. Huh. Now, huh. Film line or whatever. And he knew that I would, I would want to be behind the scenes. Huh. So, always behind the scenes. He would joke around with me for a lot of purposes, but I always used to tell him that, no, I prefer to be in the sense. Okay. So, this whole ascent started, I, I mean, I remember essentially after Zanjeev, which he produced also. I mean, his first film was also a lot of hit and it was entertaining. But after Zanjeev, there was a different story. And that story was so successful. So, in that period, Kya mahal tha ghar mein? Were there parties? Were there uh, ana jana bog actors? Ka? You know, when a director becomes famous, he is very sought after. Yeah. Did that happen? So, so, I can tell you about my memories. See, I'm 1980 born. Yeah. Zanjeer is 1973. Yeah. So, there's a bit of thing. But I yeah, can tell but, you uh, but dad must be telling you also. 100%. Huh. From all the stories and from whatever, and then from my observations in the house, yeah. what used to happen. So, you want. Ana Jana means this house used to be mostly, you would think of it as a commercial place more than a residence. 200 cups of tea a day used to be made in this house. We have a sitting room at the back where you would hear noises because there was my dad, there would be, you know, uh, what you call his writers, you would have the music directors, Kalyanji Ananji and the Rangay. Uh, Kadar Saab Mr. Kadar Khan would be inside or Mr. Lakshmi Khan Sharma who was his writer, they would be inside and whole day they would have a Jugal Bandi. Unki Jugal Bandi chalti thi. and if you would open the door of that room, the first thing that you would be hit with is smoke because they were all smokers. 
And like most of the people back in that generation were, of course, not Mr. Kalyanji Energy, but most of the other people were all mm. smokers. Mm. And they would always be sometimes laughing and fighting and discussing scenes, and that's how those movies used to be made. Mm. There was a lot of passion. And tea after tea after tea, cup after cup used to be made. And Halla Gulla Laga Rata Tha. Kabi Kabi actor ki entry hoti thi. They would just come in and go out. And the way movies were made at that time, the essence used to be that somebody would say, hey, wait a minute, during this scene discussion, why is there the musicians? Why are the musicians present? Mm. Well, back in the day, at least back then, everyone used to be so essential. The songs used to be, the lyrics of the songs used to come from the heart. So if they are writing something, one of the musicians would say, I want this piece of background music over here. Yeah, then they would say, Prakash ji, we so it used to be a consensus. There used to be actually truly teamwork that they used to work with. And the writer would also have his own say and sometimes there would be a clash between the director and the writer. But it was like for no matter what people would think back in the day that yes, the hierarchy still stands that the director has the last say. But back in the day, the director had the last say. What people didn't realize is he always had the last say after he heard his team. And most of the time, many of the times, his last say would be a suggestion of another team member also mm. and that used to be a power of a good director to learn to grasp even you know uh, sometimes like today when there's a cut on the set people go into their makeup vans immediately they'll go on it back then my father would sit during the lunch break and he would sit down and talk to the chai wala and he would talk to the light man and he would say kya dada kaisa laga shot and that man that that man on the, up there with a big hmi you know, whose position would be very, very junior, would say, Sir, how do you do Or the guy might say, Eko take lolo saab, shayad usme se or niklega. Mm. And that was his world, that was his life, because he knew that that man's emotion is what he wants to connect the masses. There are two kinds of um, products you can have mm. one which there will be people who will handcraft it, make it, you know, with full uh, hard work integrity they'll they'll concentrate to the most minor detail mm. it'll take a lot of time it may cost much more mm. it'll be labor intensive but the product will be amazing and you can see it. and then the same product if you put it into mass production on a conveyor belt mm. made in china they'll duplicate it completely mm. but you will come to know exactly there's a difference so that's what's happening with movies also unfortunately they are no longer the way i mean there's no that passion that used to be there the whole understanding of what is required is gone out the window. The whole culture is changed. And it's not because of one, uh, any one particular aspect. There are multiple aspects that have changed it. Like, you know, like our older, like the elders used to say, Ek door tha wo khatam hua. Producer, director, the entire team, unko ek hi cheez se matlab tha, ticket black ho rahi hai ki nahi, CT bad rahi hai hall mein ki nahi. Hmm. Simple as that. Public mm. ka reaction kya hai. Mm. And their heart, they would not care about reviews. They would not care about anything. They would just care about the reaction in the hall. Mm. The director would quietly go into any one of the cinemas like a Getty, a Galaxy, all, jitne bhi us time pe, uh, jo top notch hote te, I mean, sorry, jo masses ke hote te, all the top notch directors, producers, they used to quietly go into the projector room. And agar unko public ki CT sunai de gai, their heart used to be content. And that is how films used to be made. And they used to ask, black hui ticket ki nahi black hui, house full se kaam nahi chalta. Black hui, aur kitne ki black piki. And that used to be, now the black money is not going into their pocket, obviously not. But they used to be satisfied. Because people appreciated their hard work. And that is why they didn't ever give a damn. Collections apne aap a jate hain. Unko itni samasthi. The viewers are interested in knowing Mr. Prakash Mehra's association with Amitabh Bachchan which kicked off in Zanjeer and they were an inseparable jodi. I mean, it was magic. Mm -hmm. You tell me, what was it? Uh, did Mr. Bachchan come to house? Did Mr. Prakash Mehra go to his house? How much time they spent together? How did they work and create this whole, you know, big aura about the movies and successfully so? He, as my father would describe it, that's called destiny. Talent met talent and magic was made. This was in his own words. If anyone would walk up to my father, and I think including you, if you were to ever, and I think you would remember it from your Yeah, yeah, I met him once uh, at King's Hotel. 
Uh, I think you met him here at the house as well. I met you him at once at the house as well. As yes, you're right. Well. You're right. So, anyone who would try and tell him that you're the godfather of Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, he would get annoyed. He would say, mm. I am He had his talent, I had my talent. Mm. And the rest is destiny. Mm. And as far as, you know, when you say right in the beginning, did he come to the house or did Mr. Prakash Mehra? I think they barely had any houses back then. They were not in this thing. I mean, they were all at the very nascent part of their careers. They mm. were right in the beginning of their mm. careers. So, it, there's a lot of, uh, I can tell you the story which I know. I will not go by the populist story which is outside. Because there are stories, there are many stories. And I'll say it as is because I've heard it directly from my father. Mm. And directly from the other people who have been right there on the spot. First yeah. time, not, not here. So. Yeah. so, what happened back then was that uh, my father had made uh, his directorial debut with uh, Hasina Majai. And then he did this particular film called Samadhi with Dharamji. Uh, Wonderful movie. Both the films were a success. Uh, Samadhi was a success. So, like a director, actor, a jodi banta hai. So, people would have liked to see Mr. Dharminder and Mr. Prakash Mehra again work together. But Dharamji was right on top. He was the person, he was the person back then. Do it. Dharamji had the script had this particular story, the script. And uh, he said, Prakash, I have a story with me. So my father went through the story. He loved it. He, you know, he fell in love with it immediately. Dharamji put a caveat to it. He's like, Prakash, I'll be busy for some time. I won't be able to give dates for at least a year. Because, of course, my, my diary. My father thought to himself at that time that if I wait a year, people will forget me. He is Dharminder. He is right on top. He's going to come. I'm still new. There is no uh, social media, there's nothing, right, for you to keep your name alive. And it's not like you can make a quickie movie because any movie you begin will take at least a year to be made. Back then, it used to work slow. Yeah. So, if he began the project next year, that one year gap would have been a disaster for him. Mm. So, he requested Dharamji because he was in love with it, that uh, if you don't mind, can I buy this story off you? Um, Dharamji probably cons you know, consulted with a few of his family members and his close associates mm. and the, fortunately the advice, fortunately for us, the advice that he got was Haan, police wale ki kaani hai, de do prakash nu, kya farak hai? You know, give it to him. And then for the princely sum of 3,500 rupees, my father purchased that movie from him. So, and that's where the story began. Now, the uh, expectations of the people of the fraternity at that time was that if Prakash is making a film which was to be made with Mr. Dharminder, then he better replace somebody with the caliber of Mr. Dharminder. Mm. You know, you better go with a Rajesh Khanna or you better go with a Deman or you better go with a, you know, somebody of that top-notch caliber. Yeah. You, yeah. you will not this thing. So, as any director would, he started scouting for his, his hero, his, his protagonist. Mm. Uh, he approached Mr. Rajkumar. Now, Mr. Rajkumar was shooting in Hyderabad in those days. So, Mr. Rajkumar liked the story, loved the story. But he said, Prakash, if you don't mind, can we shoot here? Because my shootings are going to happen in Hyderabad. Mm. Uh, my father said, that's going to be a problem because I want, this is the story of a Bombay cop. It's the story of a Bombay policeman. So, I need the feel of Bombay. I need the, this thing so mm. that I cannot shoot it in mm. Hyderabad. So, that's how that thing came to an end. He approached Mr. Dev Saab, Dev Aram, he approached Dev Saab. Dev Saab, of course, wanted songs because he is a musical hero. And he said, Prakash, you can't make a movie like this. And my father stuck to his guns and said, there is no way we can have uh, songs in this. It's, it's a cop and I want to, and he said, I can't do it. I mean, you have to add something. And he wanted to make this story the first of its kind, that a police officer is not going to, I mean, if he's a serious cop, he's not going to sing and dance. You know, there's only one song, Yari Hai Iman, where it's... Uh, he forcibly out. smiles. He forcibly smiles and he claps. Mm. And any person who doesn't dance, that's the maximum they do. Mm. A person mm. who's never danced in their life, you try and make them dance and that's probably maximum they're going to do is just clap and tap their feet. And that's exactly mm. as much as mm. this is there. So, that was the end of that and so on and so forth. You know, one by one, there was no positive feedback from any of the top artists back then. One fine day, my father got a call from the great Pran, Pran Sam. He said, Prakash, ye picture aaye, Bombay to Goa. He said, Amit, Amitabh. Dekhte hai, I think it's, 
he's got some, you know, there's something about him. Mm -hmm. And then as the story goes, which I heard from Pransar and my dad, both of them, they both went to Ambar Oscar, which is shop stop next to Andheri. They both yeah, went to watch yeah. it at Ambar Oscar. Ambar Oscar Minor, lovely yeah. theatres. So they both went there. And as far as what I remember Pransar saying is that there was a particular scene in the film, I don't know which one, where my dad jumped on the chair and said, Mil gaya. And that's the end of that. And that's how that collaboration began. Mm. Now comes the part of the people. So people thought that Prakash has gotten senile. Because you've not replaced, you've not only replaced a top tier actor, you've replaced him with someone who is not accepted by the people as yet who's not, you know, proven himself, per se, or whatever. So, I mean, there could have been a better chance of taking somebody brand new, because, you know, but this is a person who's not yet, this thing, I mean, does mm. not have too many hits on there. Mm. But, uh, my father had faith that, no, banegi to inke saath hi banegi, kisi ke saath nahi banegi. And, uh, Unlike today's time, back in the day, if you had faith on your project, if you had, uh, you know, if you knew, if you had determination that if you knew, you could execute your goal, you could. The industry was conducive to do that. Today, it's impossible to do it. Back then, it was possible to do it. So, when distributors and financers backed, financers backed out, he actually pawned his personal, I mean, you know, he literally pawned my mother's jewelry and you know, put his own property on the line to make sure that that movie sees the light of day. So despite being a few hit, few movie hit director, he would have been completely back on the street where he began his life journey if that gamble mm. wouldn't have paid off. Did he spend sleepless nights? Oh, that would be an understatement. Because uh, when Zanji released, mm. the first uh, week was abysmal. It didn't take an opening. Did not... Uh, and the industry must be saying, Bola tha. Bola tha. The Kashmir has gone senile. You know, mm -hmm. knew it. And he had a habit on... Um, he had a small little office in South Bombay. And he had a habit of sitting at Wally Seafair's, dangling his legs whenever he would be very stressed out, smoking away. And probably one of those days he was sitting at Wally Seafair's, smoking a cigarette, thinking, what am I going to do now? I'm back on the street. But then the telephone at the office rang. And his uh, beloved, uh, you know, other partner, Mr. Satin Pal Chaudhary, you know, he received that phone call. The first phone call was from Calcutta. That there's a phenomenon we've never seen, line lagriye, mm. and we've never seen this. And then the phones never stop ringing. Indoor, CP, Bihar, I mean, wherever the distributors start calling by saying, "My God," mm. so word of mouth. So when you close your eyes. Which is that scene from Zanjeer, which comes first to you? Hmm. When I close my eyes, whenever I see Zanjeer, I just, for me, it's more of my father's sacrifice and the hard work that he's gone through behind that. So if I close my eyes, hmm. I can never see any of his films without thinking to myself, where would he be on the set behind the camera? Hmm. Hmm. I miss him. If I miss him, I would just say, whenever I see any of his movies, I know he's there. I know he's there, I know the story is behind, I know what he may be doing, what would be his take. There are many people on the set in the titles who have bought me up like, you know, from childhood who are no longer there in this world. So it's a whole different thing. Whenever I see any of his films, I keep wondering why would he be standing, what would be his mood, what was Isn't he Isn't there a scene where uh, he just bangs the table on uh, when Pran is standing, is trying to sit on the opposite him and he says, yeah, तुम्हारे बाप का पुलिस स्टेशन नहीं है। जब तक बैठने को ना हाँ ना कहा जाए, चुपचाप खड़े रहो। ये पुलिस स्टेशन है तुम्हारे बाप का घर। That one. So you're asking me something, sorry? Yeah. So that is the scene, according to me, mm -hmm. which always comes to my mind. That is the scene which probably brought the angry young man onto the foray. Absolutely. See, people forget, uh, I'm not saying this because the movie came from my father, mm. but Zanjeer was not just a film that bought an angry young man mm. onto mm. the screen. Mm. Zanjeer bought every trend that you see today into cinema, in Indian cinema. 
Zanjeer was the first movie of its kind when romance and comedy and drama used to be ruling. It was the first movie of its kind in Indian cinema. You have all the action movies today from south to north. But the trend of action, what you call purely action, began from Zanjeer. But it's so ironical na, that Prakash Mehra's movies and Manmohan Desai's movies are uh, the need of the hour uh, right now. And people are talking about it. I mean, you may not have read it in the print as yet or, mm -hmm. or on any portal, but uh, they are talking about it. That uh, we need larger than life uh, films. See, it's shifted. Cinema is supposed to be Sapno ki dunya. Sapno ki dunya sapne dikhati hai. Yeah. Reality aapka sapna jagati nahi. Yeah. Agar aapko reality bhi dikhati hai, to end mein it will give you an ending which will take you back into the dream. Right, right, right. Rags to riches. An affair between a very poor person and a very rich person. Yeah. All right, which they'll go through their fights and they'll go through their obstacles and then they'll come out on top. These are all dreams. Let me put a question across to you. Back in the day, we would have Dharamji who came from a farming background. We had someone like Mr. Rajnikanth who was a bus conductor. We had, uh, you know, any most of the people, they came literally from the street. We had Mr. Prakash Mehra as a maker who came literally from the street. He was an orphan from the street. He slept on the railway stations and he came up. Can you imagine today a taxi driver, a bus conductor, a farmer even dreaming to becoming a hero mm. or a heroine? Mm. Impossible. They won't even dream about it. Mm. That's exactly what's wrong with the industry today. Sapno ki dunya ne sapne dikhane chhod diye. If you see any one of his films, mm. each one of those films had some sort of an emotion which would be there in my father. Mm. Zanjeer is man versus the system. Mm. If you see my father, he's a child of destiny also. He grew up in the system. I mean, he was as down there as down there can be. He fought the system and he came up. Mukhtar Ka Sikandar, if you see, same thing lies. He's a boy of destiny. He was Mukhtar Ka Sikandar. Yeah. Right? Street, rags to Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, Nawakalal, ask anybody about him or whoever he worked with, he was loyal as loyal can be. So was Nawakalal. Lavaris, he was a lavaris. And Sharavi, he did love his alcohol too. So, you would basically be asking me which aspect of my father would you like? And I go out. Okay, now for the million dollar question. What happened between your dad and Mr. Bachchan? It is said that Jadugar didn't do well and something happened in that, that there was a misunderstanding. And after that, they didn't work together again. Destiny happened again. Like destiny brought them together. Destiny decided it's about time that they part. My father always said the day a movie with him and Mr. Bachchan would not do well, hmm. he would never work with Mr. Bachchan. Really? In one movie? In one movie. He said if the movie would never do well, the thing would us, I would never make a movie with this person. Hmm. And I think that's how Destiny would have it. Jadugar and Tufan released on the same day. Hmm. Manji had Tufan, Jadugar. Hmm. Movies happened to be similar. And uh, both the directors didn't know what the movies were similar to it was right in the end. Because back then, unlike today, you wouldn't get to know what the other house did. Hmm. And that's it. Oh, neither did Miss, uh, neither did Manji work with Mr. Bachchan again, neither did Dad work, but that's about it. But here, if picture is not going to be a you have such a big actor who is as good as your brother or. And uh, what happens? Ek, itni sari picture to chali. What was the friction? There is no friction. I All I can say is that people who are creative, I can talk on behalf of my mm -hmm. father, I can't mm -hmm. talk on behalf mm -hmm. of Mr. Bachchan, I can talk only as, as mm -hmm. my father's son. Mm -hmm. People who are creative, people who are, you know, who, like I said, when they. Very passionate. Out, very passionate. They tend to be eccentric. They don't have to have a reason. It's all in. Their reason comes from within. Mm. And if it comes, then there's no going back to it. That's all I can say. Mm. And they are not politically correct. They are not the ones to mince their words. And they are not... My father never saw Mr. Bachchan as a product. They never called each other again? No, they spoke, of course. The relations had always been cordial. Huh. There was... My father always loved Mr. Bachchan more... I mean, as, as a, this thing. But where there's love, there's always... A scope of okay 
if you love somebody, it does not necessarily mean that you talk to them. Sometimes you love someone, but all right, you just feel like, hmm. So I always felt it's like that. Distance aa gaya tha? Distance aa gaya tha, but distance wo nahi hai. It's not for... A, see, I can't comment. It's very easy for people to comment and uh, keep assessing what happened, what may have hmm. happened. I don't comment because it's both of them's individual relationship. I may go wrong in assessing it. I can only assume. But I just know one thing that people, when they've reached a particular point in life, you don't question the, this thing, you just leave it to them. I, so that's why I can speak on behalf of my father. Mm. He was very complex with his emotions. He was a very emotional man. And mm. he would allow his emotions to uh, you know, be in the front. And it's, it wasn't easy for people. There must be so many people in the industry who must have told him and he maybe even told Mr. Bachchan that get back together and make movies. Uh, what are you all doing? It's a, such a you know, long list of movies you all have See Vicky, if, if, if you were to see anywhere, like there would be, I mean, if that's the way the world worked, then there would be a million reasons for a lot of people to work together, come together and do things. But time, destiny, if it doesn't have to allow it, it won't work. Mm -hmm. There would be equal amount of people trying to divide the two also. Were they? There would have been, 110%. Your father has told you that? Uh, let me put it to you this way. This industry is built, I mean, today, there is a lot more than what there used to be back then. Uh, gossip will run faster. Like, there's an old saying that uh, gossip will go halfway around the world before the right news will even get out of bed. Mm. That's exactly how this industry works. Mm. Uh, on hearsay or whatever and there are a lot of people jealousy rules and people there are there will be more people trying to divide than get together after Jadugar the movies that she made mm -hmm. how would you describe their fate at the box office Zindagi Ek Jua was ahead of its time yes people were not uh, ready to see the heroine die in the end yeah uh, Madhuri dies in the end yeah and people were not prepared for that yeah so, but it was a good fact. The songs of Zindagi Ju uh, Ju are mm. wonderful. Mm. Movie didn't do well. Mm. But as yet, the songs are, you know, like some of the best. I mean, if you hear the lyrics, if you hear the mm. music, they're fantastic songs. And they were very close to my father. Mm. You know, but he penned Kabhi Kuch Khoya, Kabhi Kuch Paya. You know, and it's a, it's a very touching song. Uh, Dalal was produced by him. It was directed by Mr. Partha Ghosh. Dalal was a box office money spinner. Like absolutely, it was a, a you know profitable film. You know, so that was fine. But uh, somewhere in there, you know, like somewhere inside, and then there were like you know like I like I said, like door hota hai that if it has to come to an end. Did you ever feel that your father felt that he was responsible for giving a major flop to? A superstar, and maybe that guilt, if I can use that word, kept not him back, all. kept not him back from going further. Not at all. Huh. Not at all. Why? Okay, let's not let's not. He's given such big history of films with me. There is now a little glitch. This, in fact, was already told. By, means he had already decided this even at the peak of their uh, collaboration. That if oh. the movie was ever, if a movie was ever to bomb. Hmm. I will not work with you again. This mm. he had already done this, so there's no movies are bound to flop. There's mm. never an issue. Mm. Movies will no matter what. You see the best of collaborations. You see the biggest of superstars. Of course, the okay. Movies. Okay, let me ask it uh, another way. Uh, slightly different question. Did he lose focus or um, say the passion once Jadugar went mm. down uh, with his later movies? No. See, like I said. My father lived and breathed movies. For him, I think if you would cut his vein, before blood, dialogue didn't mm. It was like that. In his veins was mm. movies. Mm. And uh, he was so passionate. Like he hadn't seen, because he had seen uh, uh, like certain one of his films, they wouldn't. Like there were, there were movies that would come in the middle that hadn't done too well with other actors or with other associations or whatever. It's okay. It's all part and parcel of the game. But what he did see was the, what he did not 
with, with the, I, I'm trying to put the right words to it. It was difficult for him to fathom the way people were around him. He was not a person, he would only... Per se, do that. No, he always struggled with that. All throughout. Hmm. He was I thought post Jadu the people no, around him no, no. changed their, uh, you know, no. uh, it's like a sinking ship and, no, a, no, 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 no. and a flying rocket. So, no. people I react differently. For him, uh, oh. believe it or not, Manji's passing away was the biggest jhatka to my father. I was just coming to that. It was the biggest jhatka to my father. Were they friends? This is the best part, Vicky. My father loved that man. No matter what, people, he loved him. So, they both had... Uh, a sort of a unsaid respect for each other, which they would, but they would actually, on in front of the media, they would behave like these competitors who are. But behind the scenes, Manji loved my father equally. And so did my dad love Manji. Did they go for dinners? Did they have a drink together? Whenever they met, they would always laugh. If in a private time, they would always laugh and they would always hold each other and they would always, it was all for the cameras. So, they, they, fooled, laugh, the, they fooled the media? They fooled the media and how? But they fooled the media with this thing, but there are two people who are, my father always respected Manji as a senior, as a thing. And the day Manji died, I have not seen my father cry the way he cried that day. He cried and he howled. That's when I knew how much this man is attached. Did to he have any inkling that Manmohan Desai was disturbed? No. But this is passion for you, right, Vicky? It's because it was allegedly uh, something that he ended his life. Was, yes. So Never at all. I think this is how passionate people are. I know it's unfortunate that a person who's achieved so much in life, he kept, I think, people like them, my father, Manji, they keep their own standards in their head so high. They don't care about anyone's opinion of... They, they are mm. not politically correct. Uh -huh. They don't want the pat on the back of the friends. Mm -hmm. They want the public. And they feel that if the public hasn't responded to them. For them, that's the biggest... The biggest uh, jolt that they can get. And I think that's what happened with Manji. With the flop of? Anmol, I think that was the movie. If I'm not mistaken, it had a opening of a very small opening and that's what hit him hard. Did his son discuss with you and no, discuss we, with Prakash we, Mehra? No. We your father or that? Kya no, hua tha? No. Back, Kyun no. aisa unho ne itna bada step liya or itna kharaab step liya? Itna? I don't think my father would want to even ask that question. It would not be right. Because you let no, the person... No, it's a little bit like that. You go to the house at home. My father wouldn't want to, because you leave the person who did it with their dignity as to whatever reasons that they may have. But somewhere inside my father would definitely have felt the biggest, because for him it was the... You see, people would think Manmohan Desai as a competitor to Prakash Mehra. I yes. think it was a driving force. Yes. Yeah, this is the first time somebody is saying it, because we all thought they were arc rivals. I think that's also even a modest word. But arc rivals on the field, no, on the pitch. Yeah. But then they will be in the changing room and back in the locker room and they would be as buddies. Hmm. You have two top-notch lawyers who but, go to uh, court. But do you think it was just Anmol? I think it was... I don't know. I, I think it was... I'm giving you just an... I, I have no idea about anything else. But I think it was just this thing. Even Manji was very passionate. He loved movies. You wanted to get behind the scenes. Correct. Your family ventured into Zanjeer the second, I mean, again, remaking that. And uh, then it didn't do well. Now, what's preventing you from going ahead and making more movies? Uh, like I said, and, and I want to know, have people come forward to you and said, Mirko iska right so, Mirko iska right so, because you have such a uh, wonderful box of films. See, a lot of people will approach you for the rights, but that's not something that we want to do specifically with what happened with the last century. That was exactly the deal. A lesson learned. A lesson learned. Because you see, our name on the movie as producer was there for technical reasons. Yeah. But of course, and uh, I, I will not blame the public, they will think that we actually produced the film. Yeah. But we are just the people who provided the rights. Like we just gave and because of which to retain our rights, mm. we show up as producers. Yeah. But that's all right. That's okay. Mm. It's part and parcel of it, but a lesson mm. learned. And so you don't mess around with your legacy. You shouldn't. Uh, as far as going through the future is concerned, 
the industry has changed a lot. It's not the way it used to be. There is a lot of politics, there's a lot of uh, this thing, and it's not easy to come to get over those hurdles. Mm. We'll push forward as much, but then again, it's this thing. If it allows it, we'll go forward. If it doesn't, Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome, Vicky. Thank you, Puneet. Welcome. Pleasure. And it was lovely talking to you. And uh, you really threw light on many topics. Glad to. Including uh, your movies, your father's movies. Mm. Thank you so much. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you.